the proportion of male academic staff who are professors is twice as large as the proportion of female academic staff who are professors. Okay? So again, there is something that's, that's going wrong. There are many reasons why this might be so. Some of these are related to bias, uh, explicit bias, which we can address when we see it. But more importantly, there, there are implicit biases, both in men and in women, in terms of the way they perceive others, the way they relate to others, and also the way they uh, relate to themselves and understand themselves and put themselves forward for uh, different positions. And these are things that we need to look at and try to address. And further math, it's a bit, it's a bit notorious for having a high dropout rate. So this is how my further maths class started. Um, three girls out of 18, and um, we finished with one girl out of six. This was a really good environment for me because it was the first time I found people who were genuinely also interested in the subject and also really loved um, what they were doing. And we could talk about science and have fun at, at lunchtime doing that. Um, but as you will notice, it was heavily male dominated by that point. So I um, did this work experience placement with some engineers and I discovered that engineering is the answer. Engineering is a bit like design and technology where you solve problems, you use your maths and physics skills and, and you make stuff. And you know, what a wonderful opportunity to make that rather tall building that you can see behind you. So we think about um, engineering as being quite technical and you know, numbers and all of that. I've often been to meetings where I go into a room and there's 20 people in the room. I'm the only female there. I'm the only ethnic minority person there. I'm also the youngest person there by 10 or 15 years. But what I found is that actually, as a minority person, you can bring a very different perspective to things. So I heard this really interesting story from someone recently, and she was telling me that there were these, this fantastic team of engineers in the US, and they were all male, and they were all white, and they all could finish each other's sentences because they probably all went to the same university, and they were just doing these drawings of fighter engines and planes, and then they got them produced, and then they put them on the runway, and they would all fail in the testing, they would explode. And they thought, you know, what, what's going on here? It's because if you have people that think the same way, you're not going to solve problems. You're not going to pick out different things that might go wrong. You need to get people with different backgrounds, different universities, all of that, um, into a room to solve it. Most of the teams that have girls in their groups come up with much better projects. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I, it might not be the reason that women are better, uh, no offence, but um, it's good to have diversity in the group. And that's, I think that's what society needs. It needs diversity. You'll see these extraordinary ups and downs of how women get into science, get to a certain point, and then either stall or leave there. Now, this is an extraordinary waste of talent. I'm wondering what the temptation is, because I assume Athena Swan wants to see changes in these numbers. Ideally, the board at Athena Swan, they want to see 50-50, I guess, or something near that. Well, that's my assumption. So that's my first question. Is that what they want to see? And my second question, sorry, just leading on to that, if that's what they want to see, and we put all these initiatives in place, we put staff through gender bias training, etc., and those numbers don't change, what then will be the temptation to do positive discrimination? What's, what's stopping people from doing that? And as I say, sorry, it's a bit provocative, but just, I think, something important to talk about. There was no intention of saying the ambition is to get every department to 50-50. It was to say, you know, like myself, 30 years ago when I was an undergraduate at Harvard, I was told, don't worry, by the time you're grown up, just a pipeline problem, it'll all be all right. 30 years on, it's still not all right. Two or three years ago, Dame Sally Davis, the uh, chief medical officer, who runs the National Institute of Health Research, which gives over a billion pounds of research funding to um, hospital trusts to work with universities on research, announced after she had just handed out literally a billion pounds worth of five years of research money to all every panel in front of her was all male, every single panel. Mind you, she was also chairing an all, otherwise all male panel of assessors. She wrote a letter saying, that's fine, but no one will get reaccredited. <coughs> King's gets over 200 million pounds of funding through this. No one will get reaccredited unless you all get <coughs> Venus One Silver. 
talk about sitting up and taking notice there. And the last thing that I want to say is to follow up on what Evelyn said. Um, Evelyn talked about what Dame Sally Davis had done to cause people to really engage with the, the, with the Athena Swan agenda. It's crucial and it's really important that we do that. It's important for kings that we do that. It's important for natural and mathematical sciences that we do that. But that's not the reason that we should do it. We should do it because it's the right thing to do, not because someone is telling us, not because there's a real, a real stick with which we might be beaten, but because we ourselves decide that this is the kind of organisation we want to be and this is the kind of environment that we want to provide. These events are important because clearly we do have a problem with diversity in science. We're not attracting enough people into science. People see it as irrelevant, outdated, not very interesting to them. And unfortunately, you know, those things are not really true. Even though I had a little bit of confidence about, um, about science and me being studying science, now I have even more. We're so proud that King's is really starting to address some of the fundamental questions of why we have... Um, women in science who need to succeed better but somehow find barriers to their progress. And today coming here, like this uh, prom what you promised being the minority, I feel like I'm not the only one. There are a lot of other people. It was very, very interesting and uh, this type of initiative uh, really needed. Because we're trying to do two things. We're trying to make real change within natural and mathematical sciences, but we're also, importantly, trying to change culture and attitudes. And that's about raising visibility of the problems and making sure people engage with the agenda. And I think we've gone a small way towards that today. So by encouraging more people to do into postgraduate school and to take academic position, we will actually also contribute to having more women in the undergraduate degrees and pursuing STEM professions as well. Uh, I think this event is important because it focuses on problems that exist in the real world and it's, it's problems that we really want to solve and things that we want to see changed and that's really what King's is about.